question just now before before we started, and I wanted to, I wanted to uh, relate to this question. You know why? Because everybody's talking about this poor kid, you know, who was attacked in the street and whatever. You know what happened? He was injured and uh, everything. God give him a refor shlema. But uh, what I'm telling you is that um, the question was, what about anti-Semitism? People are now crying about it and screaming about it and this, uh, whatever. So I was telling my friend that anti-Semitism has existed since when? When did anti-Semitism start? It was when the Torah was given, right? That day the Torah was given, anti-Semitism anti started. So the question is why? What does the Torah have to do with anti-Semitism? So they say, right, that that mountain that the Torah was given on was called Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, right? Okay. So the word, the word Sinai in Hebrew, what does that mean, Sina? You know what that means? Hatred, mm -hmm. right? Sina means hatred, no, right? So the mountain of hate. Right. You would think that's not that's the idea, right? Where God hangs so out. what's what hatred are we talking about? What's what's the hatred over here? So they say the hatred is like this, right? That once the Torah was given, all the other nations became jealous of us. You know? Because they didn't accept the Torah. We were the only Semitism will will cease. But until that point, right, until the, the final redemption comes, it'll keep going. Why? Because as long as we have the Torah and they don't. They're jealous of us. They don't. Uh, they, they can't accept that. The fact that uh, you know they're worshiping idols and worshiping the Torah. So that's the reason why. Uh, that's the reason why we uh, we have anti-Semitism. Har Sinai. We got that anti-Semitism when the Torah was given. That was uh, that was the time that started. Okay. Anyway, we're not here to discuss that so much. But anyway, and, I want to I want to relate to that. Mount Sinai is actually where. It's in it's in Egypt. Mount Sinai is actually... In yeah, Egypt. it's in the outskirts of Egypt. Why? Because you have to go out of, you know, it's, like, it's a place called the Sinai Peninsula. Sinai Peninsula, right? Okay, no, but I understand. That's, that. that's where it is. It's, in, it's over there. But no, the, the question yeah. is this, because they talk about Moses' travels. A piece of advice that we, they give us is what? They say, if you want to avoid anti-Semitism, if you want to avoid being harmed at this time, why? Because this time of, 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 of the history is called Heble Mashiach. What does that mean? The birth pangs of Mashiach. Since Mashiach is about to burst open and come, you know, at this time, we see, right, that things are very desperate. Things are, are very tense right now because of this reason. So what happens is, right, it says in Zohar Kadosh that there's going to be a certain star, right, which is going to shift over to a different location. And because of that shift, what's going to happen is that uh, there's going to be murders in the world. Indiscriminate murders, people getting killed, people getting slaughtered. Because of the star. Right, because of that star. It, like, it, it caused, the, it's a constellation kind of thing. Right, the constellations have, you know, whatever. But the truth is, even in Israel, it's very dangerous. You know, I mean, there's terrorism over there. You, you know how escape. it is, right? You can't escape. Yeah, you can't escape. Anyway, you want to go to Paris? Same thing over there. There's attacks over there. Yeah, too, you want to go to Germany? Also over there. Canada. Wherever you go, you, you want to go to Texas? You want to go to Florida? You want to go wherever you want to go? It's there. Something's there. You know? There. So if that's the case, what can we do to save ourselves? Because we're not going to be able to change the, the world. We can't change the world. But all we can do is... So what does that mean? How do we protect ourselves? Says the Gemara, there's, there's one simple way to do it, right? Yeah. Which is very easy. All you got to do is eat. Can you imagine? But not eat downstairs. We're not talking about that. What are you we're not talking about that. Turn into a fat boy? <laughs> why, why not what they're eating downstairs? The reason is because you got to do it on Shabbat, right? Now it's not Shabbat, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's Thursday, right? Thursday night. So you got to eat on Shabbat. What does that mean? On Shabbat you have to have three meals. A person who has three meals on Shabbat, they say he's saved from the, the birth pang boy, you know? The, the, real, the real thing. So a person who has three meals during Shabbat, he's saved from Heble Mashiach. Can you imagine? From the birth pangs of Mashiach. He's also saved from that big war which is going to be. Can you imagine? What can be better than that? All you got to do is eat. What can be easier than that? Come on, give me a break. What? Uh, can, you know, just open your mouth and open your mouth and throw it in. You know, that's it. <laughs> that's all you gotta do. Okay. Does it have to so, be a home cooked meal? No, it could be Chinese, could be whatever. But you gotta bring some bread, though, right? As we said. Okay, the Chinese don't give you any bread. You know, they don't know that. They're very they're skimpy on bread. They're skimpy. So yeah. we're talking about breakfast. Lunch? We're talking about at night, Friday night, right? Friday night. For, okay, having a meal. At One in the morning, Saturday morning. Breakfast. After you come back from school. Right, and then, like and then one, right, exactly one, one like uh, say uh, four o'clock in the afternoon, you know, around there. Before the sun goes. Four, four thirty, right, exactly four, four twenty, and that's it. You're you're covered. You know, that's uh, that's all you gotta do. And Three meals. What can be? What can be? That the wise person, he's thinking about what's gonna be down the road as well.
He's not only thinking about the stuff his face now. You know? Stuff, 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 stuff. You know? He's thinking about, what about four hours later? Would I be able to eat four hours later? If I stuff myself now, right, too much, so I won't be able to. So therefore they say, right, that the remedy is to eat, around. to eat in a measured way, right? In, in Leave a little bit room for four hours later. So then, right, then this way you save yourself from all the birth, birth pangs of Mashiach, Hevle Mashiach. Who can, who can uh, save himself from that? Only HaKadosh Baruch Hu can save us. That's the, that's the remedy they told us to save ourselves. There's also other things, you know, as we, as we, you should know, by the way. They say Kiyat Shema also, right, on time. One Kiyat Shema in the morning, one Kiyat Shema in the morning. Okay, so let's get started. We had just like a preview a little bit, you know, we did some preview work, so you guys came just right, right in time. Okay, so we're going to talk today about the issue of Kashrut, because I see right from the, some comments that are being made that there's some laxity, you know, regarding Kashrut. You know, some, some, or misconceptions, whatever, all kinds of things. So therefore, issue of Kashrut, we have to now right, uh, talk a little bit seriously about the issue of Kashrut. Because what is, the, what is the issue of Kashrut? It's a very difficult issue to understand somewhat. You know what the, you know what the, uh, the Midrash asked, right, regarding Kashrut? It asked a very good question. Which is, it says, you know, the Torah tells you, right, cut the animal like this, don't cut him like this, cut him on the neck, not in the back of the neck, only in the front of the neck, and make sure you cut two that way, you know, I, I, you know, the, the, this position and that position, all kinds of things like this. What, uh, what does God care about that? Good, 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 good question, right? So the answer is like this, right? God really doesn't affect him at all. These things, he doesn't get any uh, any benefit from you eating kosher or not eating kosher, or being with your wife this way or not that way. Whatever kinds of things like this. What, uh, what benefit does he get from that? He doesn't get anything. So this is only for you. What does that mean? He wants to train you to be obedient and moral, you know? Have an ob some kind of a humility. When you humble yourself before uh, authority, God, you know, the Almighty, that means you have developed some humility. And you, you, left the, you left the realm of the animal. You become like a human being now. You understand? If you're not really keeping... is beginning to build himself as a human being, as a soul, you know, as a, as a holy... You know, it's a holy institution in his, in his body. That's the whole idea. That's the only, the only thing he cares about. Because a person who can't obey, you know, there's a rebellious heart there, you understand? I can't obey, you know? I want to be free, man. You know, it's a free country. Leave me alone. Freedom. You know, yeah, I want freedom. I want liberty. You know? That's correct. Statue of Liberty. You, know? you want liberty? <laughs> you want liberty? No, Akadosh Baruch Hu doesn't want to give you liberty. I'm sorry. If you are a Jew, you don't have liberty. You gotta keep the Torah. You know what I mean? So you gotta, that ego, you know, you gotta shoot it down. You know, that, that stubbornness, that stone, heart made of stone. You gotta, you gotta soften it up. And say, you know what, I'm gonna buckle, I'm gonna nullify my will and do the will of the Creator. That's what you gotta say. You know? You gotta come to that decision. Otherwise, one can come and nullify, you know. This, uh, I cannot nullify anything, right? So what did the sages say? The sages said, that a person who studies the Torah but does not keep it, right? Yeah, study. He studies. He likes to study. You know, like we said, right? The Greek culture, you know, the Torah of the Greeks, right? Which is what university, you know? It's a theory, but don't really. You don't have to really keep that. It's something else. You know, just enjoy it as a, as a philosophy. You know, that is kind of Torah. You know, so to, what does what does the Midrash say about that? A person who keeps the Torah like that just learns it but doesn't want to keep. It was better when he was born that his umbilical cord should have wound up around his neck and he should have choked to death. You understand? That was, it was better to be like that. In other words, there was no point in him living uh, if, if he's going to live like that. You understand? So it's harsh words. I'm sorry. I, everyone tells you, listen, you got to keep kosher. You know? And keeping kosher is not so simple, by the way, right? Because people make all kinds of sacrifices, all kinds of, you know, uh, compromises when it comes to this. Well, you know, yeah, well, I can do this, maybe not that, but you know, this I can, I can, you know, make a shortcut over here, cut some corners. I'll keep going you know? at home, right? Outside, outside right? All these things, right? All these things. I'll the restaurant, but order fish instead. You know, this Separate kind of stuff, dishes. and uh, right, all all kinds of things like this. You know, I'll just have uh, some salad, maybe. You know, have some this. I'll go to this restaurant, that restaurant. You know, and some people make these compromises, 
But the truth is, right, that you cannot make compromises with kashrut. Either you're in the kashrut or you're not in the kashrut. There's no, there's no two ways about it. You know, you have to know. You have to know what's allowed. You have to know what's not allowed, right? So this is exactly why we have to talk about this because people have some misconceptions with kashrut. Baruch Hashem, you know, the truth is that we're fortunate in a sense that. Oh, and, we, and I left messages, Rabbi. This is so and so. I have a question for you. It's very important. Can you please call me back? Nobody. That Rabbi doesn't exist. Okay. Well, if you call him back and oh say, my God. He, must be, he must be busy, you know, he's no, probably doing call something. Call him back and say, this is God, you have to ask me. Scare him. <laughs> okay. The is that kashrut has to be done in, 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 a real, in a real way. Okay, you go to a kosher restaurant, which is really under supervision, rabbinical supervision. So over there, you know, pretty much you're, you're safe because there, you know, there's what to rely on. There are rabbis who are supervising the place, if it's being supervised properly, okay, you know? The truth oh. is that even there, there's also issues, by the way, you should know. Even when there are stores, there are restaurants that have kosher supervision, sometimes, right, uh, there are issues which are not being kosher, non kosher, you know, what's the association, right? Association is, oh, you know, pork is not allowed, pork I cannot eat, I cannot eat lobster, everybody knows that, right? Everybody knows that. But, uh, question is, right, is, are those really the worst things? Uh, is pork really the worst non kosher? No, vegetables. Right? Or, or is it the vegetables, right? Really the worst. The worms. You know? The, the worms. Okay. The worms. So, question is why? What makes the worms more, more, worse than the pork? Much right? more of them. Uh, much more of them? No, what about if there's only one? There's a lot of protein in that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lower life form. But so for survival, you would eat it. Ah. For survival. Okay. So, you know, uh, I want to explain to you, right? What is, what is the problem? When, when it comes to pork, right, the prohibition of pork is basically one prohibition. It's written in the Torah. That's a big... Uh, because it's mentioned five in five different places. Each place that's mentioned, it's another prohibition. You understand? So the prohibition of bugs is mentioned much more than the prohibition of, 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 uh, of, of pork. You understand? So therefore, when a person eats a bug, he's doing five times worse than pork. So chokhal covered answer right at a question. <laughs> at least, by the way, that's I'm talking about the minimum. Why? Because it is that sometimes, at times, right, the prohibition can be much, much worse. What does that mean? There are land uh, insects. Mm -hmm. There are insects that are in the sea also, in the, in the, in the water. Yeah. Right? Oh, they, yeah, I was going to ask you that. Right? Right. Water, yeah. water insects, right? Uh, insects which are they, they grow in the water you know they, they the, the larva grows develops in the water yeah. like mosquitoes you know mosquitoes. things like this right you know what? that eating bugs is a much more serious issue than pork okay this is unbelievable so let me ask you a question then yeah. what about so putting pesticides on these things to get rid of the bugs yeah we're, we're going to talk about that. Be eating that we're going to talk about that I just want to mention one thing right before we get to like the, those, those, those questions yeah. I want you to remind me to, to answer those questions because I may forget I asked you about the water with the shrimps in the water that the have a filter on the, on the tap water. Ah, okay. So anyway, I want to tell you that uh, regarding the pork, though, th there is one thing about pork which is very, very dangerous, more so than other issues. Trichinosis. Right. Why, why is pork the worst of, of all of them, in a sense? Because of the trichinosis. Uh, no, no, I'm you're talking Trichinosis. about the physical, but I'm talking about the spiritual here, right? So pork, right, we already mentioned, is a symbol of Esav. Specifically, a sav. What's the quality? He shows himself to be kosher on the outside. You know, he wants to look righteous. He, he cannot. He cannot tolerate looking bad. He doesn't want to look bad. You know. So this is the pig. Why the pig shows you right here? Here's my. Here's my. I'm kosher, but inside, if you look inside, you're not kosher. You know. It's the same thing with esav. Esav, right? Shows you I'm kosher, but if you look at really what he's doing, the corruption. Right, what goes on behind, under the table, right, behind, behind the back doors, those smoky rooms, right, uh, the back, back rooms, the, all the corruption goes on over there, you understand? All the sins. So it's all hidden, you understand? So pork, in a sense, right, is, in, in, the quality of pork is very dangerous. That what? It turns you into like an Esav. What does that mean? That pork, it makes you into a heretic. In other words, the, the, every, every non-kosher animal that a person eats, so, uh, so you gotta, gotta, gotta cut you gotta that out, that bacon. right? You gotta cut that out, right? Because the, the the pork is what makes you spiritually very, very ill. But in terms of the quantity, right, of of, of prohibitions, uh, right, the the bugs are more. 
So can you imagine? So what is that? What I, what I mean to say? The problem is that there are certain vegetables which are known to be infested. Why? Right? For instance, the big is broccoli, right? Broccoli. Broccoli, yeah. Broccoli. The problem is that these are florets. Those florets, so and inside, when you look inside, yeah, it's very healthy. Yeah, and when you look inside, right, you find bugs in there. They say, by the way, like USDA, you know, yeah. statistics, yeah. that in, in the average broccoli, frozen broccoli package, uh -huh. you're going to find about 30 bugs inside there. Wow. On the, on the average. Being grown where the people go to the bathroom. Like okay. Broccoli, same thing too. Right. Manure, yeah. that's normal. No, yeah, but oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. They're in the field and they can't go anywhere. Yes, yes. They also grow them in the water, by the way. They, they, now they have also techniques to grow them in the water as well. Yeah, like the broccoli. Yeah, yeah. Hydroponics. Yeah, in Israel they do that. Well, hydroponics is a good thing. Okay, yeah, it's fantastic. But you know, the, sometimes the taste suffers. The taste is not so good. It's not so tasty, you know? But, you know, regarding this now, right, regarding the worms and everything, so as we said, right, that worms is a very big problem because when you eat these kinds of vegetables, so the Torah, what it, what it said was, since these vegetables are infested, any veg it's that infested vegetable or fruit, you must check before eating them, because, you know, if it's infested. What does that mean that it's infested? According to uh, halakhic thinking, right, halakhic uh, discourse, there's three things which make it dies, but that doesn't really help you, right? Why, why do I say it doesn't help you? Because it's still, you it's still prohibited, it. right? In other words, you, what do you think, right? What, if the pig dies, it's, you can eat it now? Well, no, you cannot eat it. It's the no, uh, no, same thing with the... It'll it's, fall off from the, from the branch, you know. It'll, yeah. fall, it'll fall off from it. It'll be in the water, you know, in the water. Right, because, but they, because they cling. This is the problem, you understand? So the point is, right, some, some of them also make... Yeah. They tunnel in, you know? And they, they, they dig in there. Gross. So uh, this is a very big problem. So we have lots of issues that uh, we need to address with, the, with, the, with this issue, right, with, with bugs. So, as we said, right, that according to the Torah, this is what makes something prohibited. Three times in a row you found infestation, or the majority is infested. Majority of the time that you buy that stuff, it's infested. This will make it prohibited from the... The Torah only requires us to check if it's a majority, or three times in a row. Mm -hmm. What about if it's a minority? So Torah, as we said, does not require you to check. That means you can eat it without checking it. Okay? But what happened was that the rabbis came and made added another uh, layer of prohibition here. On top of that. Okay. Uh, why? They knew, right, that majority, okay, is one thing, but there's also a significant minority, which also can put you into trouble. What is significant minority? Right? We're talking about... The, actually, there's several opinions regarding this, right? Um, according to the accepted prevailing custom that there is amongst religious Jews, significant minority is considered to be like 5 or 10%. If you have 5 or 10% of, of a, some, a certain kind of vegetable or fruit, which is inflated, was stated by the later authorities like around our times, or a little bit before. Right? There's one book called Mishkinot Yaakov. Over there it says 10%. There are also other books that say 5%. They say it's proper to check when it's 5 or 10%. But comes the, uh, right, uh, um, the older authorities, and they don't say like that. They came before these rabbis. By the way, did not know these authorities. They never saw them. You know, they didn't really study the topic so well. Yeah, it's not the new thing. And uh, thing right, exactly. They they got the, they had their own ideas according to their own logic, basically. You know, source. no, so without any source, right? Exactly. Basically, without any sources. They made it up. Yeah, made it up. But more, you know, whatever seems logical to them, whatever you know. So, what do I mean to say by that? That a person should always try to find sources which are, you know, from the older generations, because those are more reliable. Those that you have to, you have to check is not 10% or 5%. Far from that. That's not called significant minority. So what is called significant minority? Says the Rivash, we're talking about close to half. Close to 50%. 40%. 40%. Something like that, right? Wow. Okay, basically, it's a good thing to check it for stuff anyway. You don't get it. It's good. He's giving you... He's helping you. He's benefiting you. He's keeping you out of the problem. So... No, no. I'm not talking about getting in trouble with God. Uh, you're not getting your own health. It's interesting, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's good. It's, 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 I, I understand what you're saying. That's exactly why the custom is like what you're saying. Right. Because of this reason. It's good to check. Yeah, it's good to check. It's yeah, good it's good. To yeah. Yes, I won't eat a worm. <coughs> it's not... Force you. Right, right. Don't, right. You're not obligated. You're not obligated. And if you eat it by mistake, God will not punish you Different. for it. So, Rabbi Tai, 
uh, regarding this issue, right? But there's only one, one, there's only one issue. The question is, does that also apply to vegetables as well, or does that only yeah, apply to chickens? So we can't eat dying animals, right? Uh, yeah, but you have to know what that means, dying animals, right? I mean, if it, uh, there are certain symptoms that we have from the Talmud that we know these systems, symptoms may make it into a trefa, they make it into a non kosher animal. Right. You're not allowed to eat that. Right. Even if you slaughter it, it's not going to help you. Okay. Right? Uh, so, right, that the Rivash is talking about chickens. Now, the question is, is this also apply to bugs? Or maybe there's a different standard for bugs, right? right? Regarding significant minority, the truth is, according to logic, you know, just basic logic, it should be really the same. Why? Because the concept of significant minority is one concept. You know, it should be across the board, because you know it's one concept. You can't have to say, oh, here is something else, here is something else. Uh, you know, it doesn't make sense to say that. Cleanliness, right? You know what I mean? So then, what is what? What's really the halacha? Does this actually the concept of chickens and the concept of, of vegetables, bugs, is the same? So he affirms that. You understand? So meaning what? Even though he didn't see what the Rivash wrote, because the Rivash came after him, right? But nevertheless, he, he does make a link between these two these two sections of law, and he says they're the same. Right. That's, that's what he says. So uh -huh. therefore, right, uh, is, the, the rule is that it's the same. You told me one time Rabbi yeah. was eating raspberries or strawberries? Yeah, I'm going to tell you about that. Right, like, yeah, it's good you remind me. So what I'm telling you is about Thai, is that really the concept of significant minority that the rabbis are obligated you to, to, to check that, to check vegetable or fruit, we're talking about 40 percentish. Right. Something like that. It's, Ka mostly, it's mostly the Ashkenazi and the Hasidic hardcore people who checked 5-10%, you know, <laughs> making always, it's true. He says, excuse me, Rise you don't want to eat, don't eat. I know what I'm doing. Well, with strawberries, right? somebody was eating. Tell the story. I'll, I'll explain to you, right? Yeah, so, anyway, the point is about time. So, yes. Rabbi. Yeah. By the token, it's the Ashkenazim that are usually the secular Jews. No, that's reform. Uh, yeah, well, that's very interesting what you're saying. Very interesting. Okay. Right, right, right. In other words, you have both You have both extremes. You have both extremes there. Yes, yes. yes. And it's the Ashkenazim that are usually the reform. They were the ones who started that movement. Yeah, yeah they were the We didn't start that movement. Yeah. They started it. They were, you know yeah. It's true. Saying? Yeah, it's true. This is the yeah. irony it's, about the okay. it's, it's, it's a core of Judaism. It's everybody knows this. All the life is the. That's the way life is. Right? You crave this. You crave that. In the summer, you want this. In the winter, you want that. You want oranges. You want lemons. You want this. Right? You want tangerine. Everything. Yeah. Every time. Every season has its own fruits, yeah. and vegetables, and this all kinds of things. So a person is being in, encountered with this all the time. He's always, you know, being uh, coming into contact with this issue, the issue of bugs. So now, what happened was, right, that there were some rabbis, according to the concept that we stated, of five percent, ten percent. They wrote books on this, right? Pamphlets, books. They published already. They've been doing that now for twenty years. Publishing these pamphlets, or thirty years, right? You know, for a long time already. And they've written, right? Okay, this food you cannot eat. That right? Sorry, there's no way to eat that food. You can't even check it. You just stop eating. Can you imagine? They tell you, figs, not allowed to eat. It's a trait, like a pig, you know? Fig? No such thing like this. You can't eat figs. No such thing like this. You can't eat strawberries. No such thing like this. I'm sorry. Alavai. You know? <laughs> no such thing like this. You know? Uh, the, a person has to, you know, shouldn't go so, so far to extremes like this. It's, become, it's going, you know, to the other extreme, which is also not really very healthy. So I'm you know, thinking, it's like, regarding it's this, hand that you, you feel like you're dirty or something, right? <laughs> regarding this, right, say Shalom Melech, right, what is this, King, King Solomon, the wise, he said, don't be too righteous, you know, don't be overly righteous. Don't become like a, you know, like a total, don't, a little. don't worry, don't be a zealot. You know what I mean? Right. A zealot. What does that mean? That if you really are on that level to be so pious, you know, to be like a saint like that, that's for you, but you cannot tell the community to be like that. You know, for the average person, this is too difficult. Right. It's too hard. Who's gonna Who's gonna keep all these rules? Right. You know, don't eat strawberries. You said the golden words, right? The boxing. golden words. <laughs> too much science. Too much medicine. Okay. Pesticides. Some That's pesticides. exactly the whole thing. Well, that was the question I had before. Monsanto having something that was genetically modified, and 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 what it does is it it turns the fruit in, in itself <coughs> into a pesticide. Right. And you're eating the pesticide. That, no, but that's like screw. That's why people don't like Monsanto. So therefore, Abatai, I want to give you some good advice in order to avoid, you know, avoid. To live a more normal life, right? To make life more livable, as they say, right? Eat. 
you know, we got to make life livable a little bit. We can't go too crazy. We can't go too fanatic. So therefore, we got to stick to the halacha. So what does the halacha say? Halacha says, as we said, right, as we said, 40%. What does that mean? That most fruits don't come to that level, as you said. That's absolutely not. Right. Fresh stuff. You can't stuff. No, no, fresh figs. You buy fruits two weeks later? Fresh strawberries. Fresh cherries, right? Go to Romanov, you'll see over there, right? All the stuff, yeah? Right? Go to over there. Nisim likes Romanov. I know he likes it very much. Oh, my God. It's his favorite store, right? Oh, my God. Okay. Nisim likes to go to the extreme all the time. I'm giving him Right, right. I'm giving a free plug. Free plug. Okay. I don't know anybody so, who buys, uh, you know, fruits or vegetables two weeks after. My father does. He's very smart. <laughs> oh, yeah, like the place that used to be next to uh, Avon, right? That guy. Remember that guy? I don't know. I've never come up with I don't mean to say, by the way, I'm not, when, I say, when I say to buy fresh, I don't mean to say that you should buy, like, you know, after it's been in the store for two weeks. I'm not talking about that. Well, this, this, this what I'm saying is, yeah, I'm not talking about that. That's not what I meant. What I meant to say is that it's... Who can eat like that? This is not normal, you know? You have to be, you have to be, uh, you know. By, by the I mean, time you know. you're done, you won't feel like you. Exactly, that's the whole point, you understand? Yeah. It's like a diet. That's the whole point. So, this kind of this kind of attitude in halakha, where does it really lead you to? Either, right, you don't eat at all, right? or you eat in a crazy way, in a crazy manner, which is not normal, right? So, either way, you're losing, you know, you're not living a normal life. Like some kind of, uh, you know, monk, I don't know exactly what, what you're becoming. I don't know exactly what it is, right? So, the point is, over time, that a person should know. That in general, if you buy fresh produce and it's not infested more than 5-10%, you know, it's not 40%, it's even much less than that usually. You don't have to check these things. If you want to check them, God bless you, you know, you can, you can check them. <clears throat> so as our friend Nisim said, you may think, by the way, this is just a fantasy, you know what I'm telling you. Like maybe I just made up this, this myself, you know. Then, on a daily basis, there's nothing to worry about. But, but, now, like, right, getting to the other side, right? right. Regarding the fruits... <clears throat> By the way, there's also another leniency regarding the fruits. You know what it is? I want to tell you because this also helps you out a lot. This was, exactly, this was exactly the question I was asked two weeks ago, and I wrote him an answer in my emails and my, in my uh, Facebook. I said it was like this, right? That there's also two other leniencies involved here. Which is, one is that if that fruit grew, right? Uh, in, I'm sorry, if that womb grew in that fruit, after it was detached from the fruit already, and it did not come out of that fruit, it never left the fruit, that, that worm is kosher. Can you imagine? The worm itself is kosher. Mm-hmm. That's what the Shulchan Ruch says. Uh, if, it went in, that? if it went in on the tree, so, it's very complicated. Yeah, so what, what do I mean to say? That it, You're supposed to drink it's it just and then swallow the worm, right? It's, uh, no, you swallow the worm, you go nuts. I'm telling you, you're going to turn into a scorpion. <laughs> the idea is not to swallow. I don't know exactly what's the story with that worm, uh, the thing, but one, I want, somebody told me that the one rabbi allows it. Over it's, uh, it's it's very saturated in alcohol, and it is certain, and you just you it's, it's, it's a larva. It brings up your, it brings up your active toxicity level, like God knows what. Look it up. The worm yeah. brings up your toxicity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look it up. <laughs> anyway, Mexican shit. Anyway, what time? So getting back to what we said, uh, therefore. Right? As we said, there's that leniency as well. So what does that help you? Because I'm not even sure if that worm is not kosher. I don't even know. If, even if there is a worm inside there, I don't know if it's not kosher. No, I'm sorry. There are you Moroccans. I'm not even sure if this worm is, 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 is kosher or not. Could be that it's a kosher worm. So therefore, that it's also another doubt. Makes into a double doubt. One is, right, that I'm not even sure if there's a worm in there. Number two, even if there is, maybe it's kosher worm. I'll tell right? you which worm. Yeah. So, which it's worm a double doubt. The one from the cartoons that comes out from the apple and starts talking to you. <laughs> okay. That's the kosher worm. Okay. Tell me, let me know if you find one like that. Because you know? I haven't found it yet. I don't so know. Wait, you're covered. Right, you're covered. But that's only as we said, right? You're only covered when it's less than 40%. That's the reality, today, Rob. There's but if this war, so the yeah. rabbis over there said you cannot do fix fix You understand? That's the whole thing, right? Cannot do. Exactly. Cannot do. Why? Because they said even though it's there is a fix fix you still have to be machmir. You still have to be stringent. But now I'll give you another leniency, right? Besides that, frog legs. Listen, you're warm. You're, you're, you're warm. You're warm. You told me before. You're warm. So what's the idea? The idea is right. There's a, something in the kashrut called batel b'shishim. It gets nullified in the majority of the kosher part. You understand? So what does that mean? When the body of the worm or the bug is complete, it does not get nullified. The rabbi said it does not get nullified. 
But once the body is broken apart, dissolved, you know, it does get nullified. So therefore, what happens is, will, will come now the vast majority of the of the fruit, yeah. right, which is more than sixtieth of the whole of the whole mixture, and will nullify that part. Because so therefore, it'll be kosher. Because, but, but, yeah, if you eat a, a, a yeah. bug and it goes into your stomach, yeah, the acid breaks it up. But it's it wasn't to you oh yeah, yeah. No, you're right and for you sure. But once you ate it, it's already too late. But uh, don't tell me the special water. <laughs> I, you know, I was when I was studying yeshiva in Israel, uh, in the rabbi's yeshiva, Alav Shalom Maran. So he uh, had a grandson over there. His name is Yaakov Sasson. A little bit more strict. Very good friend of mine, right, Yaakov Sasson. So uh, what happened was that one day he told me he went to the rabbi. His grandfather, you know, his grandfather, you know, gave him a lollipop pie. How are you? You know, my grandson, you know, nice to see you, you know. Right? So, uh, the rabbi was very friendly to the children, you know, his grandchildren, very, very friendly, giving candies, you know, this and that. He was a little bit too old for candies. You know, he's already, he's already a married guy, right? He's married with a family, right? He's not too old for, for he candies. Sells di- he sells diabetes. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, what happens is like this, right? That he comes to the rabbi. I think he told me on two occasions he came to him. One was he saw him eating uh, dates. Add parts out of there, you know, take everything out, do surgery. Once you finish surgery in four hours, you can have one cherry, right? Then you gotta do another surgery, right? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not exaggerating, right? But the point is that uh, he saw the rabbi eating these fruits and he wasn't checking them. He was just like, one after the other. Pach, 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 pach. He was hungry. So he, right, uh, he told me that he asked the rabbi, you know, one time he says, he says, uh, but these things, be, you need to check these things. Well, no? Told him, he says, you know, he says, when, he told him. So he answered, him, when you when you check when you eat them, you check them. He told him, right? That's what he told. Him. <laughs> so what, what do I need to tell you, right? Maserah, right? We see from there that uh, the rabbi himself also, right, did not live this kind of a life. I'm sorry, you know, but to, to check every cherry, you know, what's the pleasure of eating cherries like that? You know what I mean? How can you how can you enjoy eating cherries like that? So if you make it into a cooks when you cook those things, whether it's a fruit or a vegetable. It's okay. It makes a kosher. Why? Because says the Rashba, right? Then now there's double doubt here also. You understand? What's the double doubt? Maybe there was no bugs there. And even if there, if there was, maybe it got dissolved. It got nullified. Two doubts. So it says, therefore, says the Rashba, since we have a double doubt, says the Rashba, therefore, so therefore, once your mother, let's say, right, your, your grandmother, my mother cooked a compote, whatever, and she didn't check these vegetables, she didn't take the fruits, whatever it is, she made, she made a shake, you know, some kind of thing like this, right? And she cooked it, whatever, jam, jelly, you're allowed to eat it now. Applesauce. You know what? Because it's impossible to check it after you cook it. You know, Peach. how are you going to check it? Peaches. It's all over the place, right? It's all over, you know, I mean, you can't really, there's nothing to check. What about the it's earth, all dissolved. The earthworm. The earthworm. It, what about it, earthworm? It, it exists continually. Okay. They don't have a vertebra. You know okay. what that means? They don't have a backbone. Yeah, right. They don't have any bones. Right. They're boneless animals, right? right? So the rule is that boneless animals cannot cannot survive more than twelve months. Is that a, a you understand? Rule? It's a rule. Yeah, Einstein? yeah, yeah. It's a rule. You know, the Torah teaches us this. You know, I, I dare you anybody to, to to contradict this, right? Let's see if you can find something. Anyway, the point is, that also helps us a lot as well. Why? Because if something is like aged fruits, you know, dried fruits, and it's been sitting for twelve months, it's kosher. Why? Because even if it had bugs, they already got dissolved anyway. <laughs> for 12, 12, 12 months. Uh, yeah, you understand? Got, got a so therefore, they don't need any, any more to be checked. Rabbi, the, any, 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 any fruit which has been around for 12 months. I leave a tequila bottle for 12 months, aged. Yeah, I just, I just don't know. That regarding this drink, I'm not really familiar with what this is and how it's, it's made. I don't mean for flavor. He's looking it up it now. gives flavor to the alcohol because it's drinking alcohol. I don't, I don't, I don't, don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so what's the reason why they put it in? Don't make Why? up your own They're stuff. Jewish. Jewish. Read about it first. They're not Jewish. <laughs> I'm telling you, I saw Quentin Tarantino's movie. The, the... <laughs> okay, so you know what? Uh, before before we talk about this topic, we gotta first, you know, we gotta first research a little. You saw the movie. Oh. My- Search first, right, yeah, guys. Before we get into this topic, let's not do like you know just okay, ad hoc. It's a worm that right, lives right. in the agave plant. They put it just for the decoration. Yes. Oh, decoration. Don't ah, decoration. now we got a different story. Okay, now we know it's kosher. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah, you just you just gave it. A, it's inside oh. of the alcohol. You gave a hexer to it just now, right? Five, 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 five. Kosher. Wait a second. Are you telling me that Mexicans actually keep our halakha? 
<laughs> I guess so. <laughs> when they drink, I they don't keep the halakha borders. That's the problem. <laughs> wow. say kosher when the no, no, wait, 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 wait. or gusano wait. actually originated with tequila. He killed me with the this. When he said they don't keep the halakha with the borders. The gusano <laughs> is the larvae of a type of malt that is a nagavi plant. Spits, right? Okay, so let me explain to you why, right? According to what you said, why this tequila is kosher. By the way, also I heard from a, one local rabbi over here who told us that it's kosher. He works in the Vada Rabbanim, you know? He's, okay. He's, uh, this is Rabbi Hecht. Rabbi Hecht. He, he, right, Rabbi Hecht, yeah, yeah. From, from, the, from, the, uh, from the Afghani shul, right? So he also uh, was, uh, was to, told us, right? He, he's, he's very expert in these things because they, they, that's their job to check these, right, you know, these foods. So, but I can tell you right, right now, I can affirm that. Why is that? Because... Um, there's a rule regarding uh, worms and bugs, which is what? That let's say a worm or a bug fell into a certain food, right? A soup, whatever, right? right well, I'll tell you why. Because, because since it's... Of it, he's saying, right? you know, there's a rule in halakha called you know what that means? No. That something which gives you a taste, but it gives you a bad taste. It, 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 it does not improve the taste, it makes the taste worse. So tell me now, the bug that fell into that soup, right? The worm that improved the taste or made bad, made bad the taste? You made it bad. Know. You wouldn't know. Right. Terrible taste, these things. It tastes terrible. No, you know. We know, no, we know. Because Allah says so. Shulchan says, yeah. They eat flies by the thousands. Everything. Okay, very good, but. They, they, they very good, but what I'm saying is like this. Uh, when you. That's not really, that's not really a proof for anything. Why? Because when you put the soup, when you put the fly in the soup, it doesn't, it does not improve the taste of the soup. Chinese juice. This is what the halakha says. What if the fly first one inside of an apple that yeah. was already rotting, it got yeah. some sweetness, and it came to the soup, added flavor to the soup. So that's not coming from the fly, it's coming from the fruit, that's something else. So, exactly. so for sure it's kosher. Why? Because the taste is not being improved by that thing, it's being, it's being ruined by what that What if the alcohol is not 60 times over? It doesn't have to be. When it comes to giving bad taste, even if it's not 60 times over, it's still kosher. You understand? Why? Because you're not eating the worm anyway, right? What do you care? You know, you're not eating that worm. Right? That worm. If you were eating the worm itself, that's something else. You're not allowed to eat that worm, right? That's that's pretty much clear, right? But Rabbi, when it comes to the question related but unrelated, the yeah. uh, brandy people drink brandy or scotch, yeah. and things like this that are that are made in casks that had wine in them before. Right, right, right. Is right. that kosher? Uh, regarding this question about uh, uh, using using casks, right? Uh, we have to talk about that some other time. It's a different discussion. You know what I mean? Because uh, if I remember correctly, the rule is that it's kosher. The, but the those... top, it rots away. It burns away from the purity of the alcohol itself, right? I'm sorry, what's that? The yes. flavors of the of the white wine, that rotting. Uh... Yeah, anything anything which is absorbed in the walls of a of a of a twenty four hours. That's what it says in the halakha. Oh wow! It's a, it's a rule. Any food, whatever it is, but it's only the taste, not the actual food right, itself. Right, right. The, the taste of the food. You're becoming Ashkenazi, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is how laws divide. Yeah. Right. Okay, so anyway, but getting back to what we said, so therefore we have several leniencies that we can use in order to make life livable. You know, regarding these things, right. a person has to consider all these factors before he tells somebody. You know, oh, you don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat all these things. You know, you can't sick. filter from the from the street into the home. In other words, at the tap. Okay. And it filters out the, the sh- these little shrimps, <laughs> what, what they call little shrimps. Okay. Now, this is what gives the, our water the best taste in the whole country. These little bugs. These, these. I can make the same argument. Uh, well, you know, uh, I'll tell you something, that regarding the water, uh, we're not really concerned about it. You know why? Because they're not visible to the naked eye. Any 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 animal which is not visible to the naked eye is not is, is has no problem with kashrut. That's the rule, right? They asked, by the way, one time Moshe Feinstein regarding this. It's supposed to be very healthy for you. Yeah, those are usually kosher. You know why? Because once you put it into pill form, you're not really eating it anymore. It's just like you're ingesting it. You're not really getting the taste from it or anything. Right. You know, so usually uh, things like that are usually fine. Be careful a little bit. You gotta, in other words, you gotta ask a rabbi. You know, regarding these things, just to make sure. That you're okay, but uh, the rule is right that uh, when you're not eating something, just ingesting it, and you're taking it as like as a medicine, that's that's okay. You know, if you need that medicine, you need to take a certain medicine. Which also, a lot of a lot of times, what happens is that these things are altered, you know, chemically altered. So once they get altered, they're kosher anyway because they don't have the taste anymore. Sickness, right? In Russia, people like tuberculosis. People drink like dog fat. 
and then put it into a pill. So there it makes it kosher. You see? So there are ways to there are ways yeah. the taste why so hard. Because you're enjoying it, right, exactly. That's the whole idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, as a rabbi, you uh, you get